Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. Uh, the last video we actually went and we blew up the schematic in order to look at different ways of grouping components. You know, if we so we took the finished Bench Buddy project and we wanted to basically rename things in each schematic page based on the page numbers so that we could group them easier. And that kind of inspired this video where we're going to go in and actually look at the net names in order to group signals easier. And this is all in the guise of looking at uh, net classes because that's actually something we didn't do very well in the bench buddy. So this is the bench buddy. If you go look at that other video, which we'll try and link below, uh, you can actually see how to actually clone this project onto your own machine. Uh, but then if we if we go into something like this, let's go into the oops, let's go into the relay page. Okay, and we see uh, signals here, right? So we see all of these things are uh, labeled and stuff like that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the layout real quick. Uh, and take a look at that. And we see that some of these signals should actually be labeled. Uh, see that Relay Plus here actually does correlate to Relay Plus here. So so the net names are like that. Now, what we really want to talk about today, though, is you see that this is a good example because these are, for some reason, you know, I decided to make this a thinner trace and this a thicker trace. Now, we can actually do this programmatically where it no longer has to be uh, you know, we 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 would miss it when it actually gets imported into the schematic. So this is this is the the relative idea of net classes. And so if we go into the uh, design rules here, let me make this bigger. Oops, make this bigger first. So if we go into design rules, we can see these are the net classes. In this case, we all we have are uh, default, which you'll have on on yours no matter what. And then I actually had set up one for AC power. And if we look at the AC power stuff. We can see for AC, there are only three signals in here. Uh, today, though, what I wanted to talk about is actually changing the net names on the schematic to make your net classes easier. And this is going to manifest in two different ways. right? So uh, this is going to be basically naming here in order to make things easier later. This is under the assumption that if, if everything was... You know, if we were starting from scratch with just the schematic and then pushing it into the layout. So what I'm going to do is actually change the name here. And I'm actually going to change it not with the uh, high level signal here. I'm actually going to label the, the name. Uh, I'm just going to hit L. And then I'm going to say sig relay plus. Okay. And then I'm going to say uh, L sig relay minus. Now you might say, well, oh, I guess I can get rid of that uh, underscore there. You might say to yourself, well, why why am I going to go and, and name all these signals one at a time? And for the most part, you actually don't have to. If everything's kind of on the default, if everything's going to be basically the same thickness, then you really don't need to do this. So if everything's, if your default's going to be your signal stuff, you can just say, okay, everything's default, that's fine. But however, maybe you want to do it so that now your power is a different uh, is a different net name, right? And it wants to be a different thickness instead of traces and stuff like that. And so what we can do, we can look either at uh, the basically this net right here will actually be named after this flag that it's connected to. So we could look just at the pluses. However, uh, it might be that well, it's going through a zero ohm resistor here, so we might want to rename this over here to something like hit L power uh, opto in right so we might go and group the pluses all together right anything with the plus 12p we might grip those under a power type of thing but then we might also look for anything that's power now the ultimate idea here is basically taking all of these pre-named specialized non-default nets and then assigning them to a particular class right so the idea being that maybe we default to all of the signals being on a certain you know trace width but then we know for power stuff well we want power stuff to be a thicker uh, trace width right so then we can name this one as well so we'll hit L again power opto out right and you know the naming doesn't really matter the, the main thing that matters here is you'll notice that I put power and sig at the front, right? Sig being for signal, of course. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to save the netlist. Okay, save the netlist. 
That's fine. I'm going to uh, close. Actually, I'm going to launch. I don't need to launch CVPCB. I should. Uh, I'm going to actually not even close that then. What I'm going to do though is actually, so it's this area where all the signals are all together. I'm going to go in here, right click, or sorry, select, and then I'm just going to select the traces and not even the zones, and basically just delete the traces. And then right click, delete block. So you see I got rid of all of those traces there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the net list because then that should change some of the nets that are in there. Read current net list. Okay. There are some errors, but they're not really related. And now, if we go back to that schematic, if you look on the right side of U1, we should see, aha, look, these are now labeled. The nets, are, the nets and the associated pins are labeled with that name that we gave to them. Right? We see that between the two, the two things that need to be connected, they are. Now, I'm going to undo that. The real thing here, okay, so we could go and then set up a new net class name. Right, we're going to call this power, right? And maybe, so you see right here the default clearance is 6. The default track width is 10. This is actually based on the global rules that should be over here. Um, what we're going to do is make the default to be 24 mils for the track width. And then the clearance we're going to also make a little bit bigger. We'll make that 12. Okay, now the key thing here is basically now as we scan down we see that oh look there's a bunch of stuff in here based on the sheet and stuff like that but now we can go to the relay right which should be yeah so now we say the relay power opto in and basically looking now it, it basically separates itself from all of the just generically named nets basically so now we can select these and put them into the power right we can select these and move them over, and now these are in the power class, in the power net class, right? Same thing here. We can then go and take all of the the rails and add those to the power net class, right? And basically now every time we start uh, routing these, it's going to go and pull this new clearance and track width. The clearance being really important for the design rules check at the end, right? Making sure that you have the proper clearance between signals. But let's take a look at this right here. If we hit X. We can see that that's already thicker than what we had before, right? So it's basically defaulting to that that thicker trace width. And you can see it also shows up here. If we would have changed the via size, it would have done that here. So this defaults, it's kind of drawing weird right now, but if it defaults to that thicker trace width. Now we can tell that because if we route this just generically named one, this should be a 10 mil trace. Now this one actually doesn't show Oh no, it does once I clicked actually. So, so basically, this is a great way to start separating out different signal types and making it easier to to make thicker traces. Now, same thing here, right? This was another one we put into the power net class, right? So this is automatically thicker. Boom, done. Now, the reason we might need to have something like this, where we actually name a non, right? We we had basically used these flags. But basically, I put it through a zero ohm resistor, so we needed to name the other side because otherwise it would have gone from thick trace down to thin trace, and then uh, it's kind of moot at that point. So, uh, especially going through a zero ohm resistor. If we ignore that though, and we just say, okay, well, the net class is, you know, basically anything in the power net class needs to be that thickness, then we start to really be able to, to separate things out based on, you know, what are the needs of that type of signal that we're hoping to accomplish. Same kind of thing happened over here. This was part of the uh, the net class we saw for that AC power. If we drew this, this defaults to that thicker, uh, I think it was 150 mils. Yeah, 150 mils you can see up here. Oop, you can see up here, it defaulted to 150 mils and a 46 mil via. Uh, so that is definitely a thicker trace because I had added these three relays to that AC uh, net class and and basically anytime I click on that then it's gonna go and default to that new one now another thing to mention is that even if it defaults we actually can switch it if we hit the W key sorry that's not showing that but if we hit the W key it'll still maintain that same clearance right so it's still showing the clearance that we had set in there however we can go and change the actual thickness the available thickness based on 
just hitting the W key. Basically, I just cycled through all of the available uh, thicknesses of traces. So you can change them, which is nice because sometimes you might want to do that, right? Say we didn't we didn't name this one properly, right? We didn't get it in the right net class, but we want it to be a you know a 24 mil trace. We can get it to be 24 mils, right? It is set to 24 mils right now, and that's how a lot of this design was done initially. But uh, basically, it's best if you start to name and group all your signals by net class, and you'll have a a more reliable and a and a uh, you know better design eventually. So that's all for now. Uh, if you have any other questions, you can head over to the forums forum.kicad.info. You can check out other questions people have and other uh, comments on this video and other stuff. Thanks for watching.